What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the first beta of macOS Tahoe Beta 1. And in this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. As you can see, we got a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you can see right here is that we have a brand new cursor. It is actually a lot more rounder and a lot more friendly. Now, before it would just be a cursor with no rounded corners, but now this cursor has a lot of rounded corners. You can see right here. It looks very modern and looks very nice compared to something on Windows. And yeah, let's move on to the next feature. All right, the next feature is that we now have a brand new design inside of macOS. So if you were to open up an app, apps now slide into existence, apps close out of ex existence, at least some of them do. Let's try this one. And yeah, uh, some of them should be sliding out of existence. Let's try this. Just take my word on it that some of them slide out of existence. And let's move on to the next feature. Then, all right, so the next feature is that Launchpad has been completely removed from macOS. and has been replaced with something called Apps. So this is what the Apps things looks like. It's basically just the app library just built into macOS. Although at least right now you can't have a full screen version of it you can at least search all your apps so if i want to search my app right here you can see there it is right there i just click on it and then it just opens up right here now next thing is that you'll see on the dock we got some dark mode icons so these are the dark mode icons that are in mac os and if we were to go inside of settings right here you'll be able to adjust it all inside the appearance settings so we also got some clear icons so uh at some point our dock should show the clear icons there they are that's what those look like. We also have a light mode version of the clear icons. It's just taking a little bit to update because this is the first beta. There it is. And we also got tinted icons. This is, these are the tinted icons right here. You can see at least two of the apps right here are working fine. Let me change it to yellow. There's the yellow version. Let's do pink. Now this is actually very customizable just like iOS is. So if I wanted my icons to be red, they could be red just like that. And we could also use a theme color. Theme color basically just puts it back to automatic right here. And you just got a lot of customization with the dock icons. Of course, every app will need to support these new icons. Uh, as time comes on, they probably will most likely support it. The next thing has to do with the control center and menu bar. So the section right here has been renamed to menu bar and that's it. And you're gonna see that there are a lot of check marks right here. So you could allow apps in the menu bar. So these right here are just the apps. So if I wanted Willy Widgets right here, if I were to have an app visible in the menu bar, that's what it would look like. And if I were to just turn it off, it would just disable that app from the menu bar. And it should come back if I were to just do this. Okay, maybe it's a little bit buggy right now, but it should be coming back. Maybe I'll do a different widget. All right, so it's just a little bit glitchy here right now. And if we were to go inside the control center, you'll see it has been completely redesigned. If we were to click on this edit controls button, you'll see that you have a iOS like experience of changing controls. So you could do left and right windows and you could add to control center or add to the menu bar. Now, however, not every app will be able to be added into the menu bar from why I'm able to tell. So you'll see that developers will also be able to add their own apps in here and everything just seems very nice and clean. You are also able to search controls. So for example, let's search up battery and you're able to search up battery. Everything is also a lot more rounded in here and you're able to just add whatever you want, even keyboard brightness and you're even able to adjust the size. So if I were to do large, that's what it looks like, small, it just makes it an icon. And I think if we were to click on the icon, it just brings it up here, just like it did with previous versions. But yeah, that is what it looks like here inside of the control center. Now the next thing is actually a really big requested feature. If you were to press on the volume or brightness icons, you'll see you'll no longer see them. And instead what will happen is if it was not glitching like this, you would see it happen inside the menu bar. So this would show up right here and you'll just be able to see it on the top. It's no longer in the center. It's now just on the top. Something that's been needing to change for a while and it has finally changed inside of Mac OS Tahoe. Now the next change has to do with alarms. If you were to go inside the clock app right here and then click on an alarm, you'll see that there's a new snooze duration option. So before you could snooze for nine minutes and that would be the only option because that's what the rest of the tech industry did right before the iPhone. But then technology got advanced, so Apple just added this. 
and now you could just choose your snooze duration. Now the next change has to do with lock screen settings. So if you were to go inside of settings and go into wallpaper right here, you'll see you have a brand new clock appearance section. So you could show a large clock on screensaver and lock screen, on lock screen or never. This has always been an option, but what you'll see right here is that you're actually able to customize the clock on the lock screen now. So before you would not be able to customize the clock at all, but now you're able to customize it just like how you should have always been able to do it and it's exactly like iOS right here. So this is what it looks like right here. Pretty nice to see that this has been brought over to macOS. And now the next thing is that the alert sounds have gotten a little bit more HD. The boop sound sounds a lot more dynamic, if you know what I mean, and the breeze has more of an echo to it. All these sounds sound pretty much updated. They're not brand new, they're just mainly updated inside of macOS Tahoe right here. Now the next thing is actually we got a brand new calls app inside of macOS. So it's just the phone app just ported to over to the Mac. It mainly just shows your recent contacts right here. And to actually go to your contacts, you have to actually go inside the contacts app, which also looks pretty much brand new here. It looks a lot better than it did before. And inside the calls app, you're just able to call people, including just dial people right here. So you just dial people right here, and you just dial just like that. Now the next thing is that we got a brand new app right here. It is the magnifier app. So this is what it looks like right here. Be able to zoom in, zoom out of stuff. It's just basically the Ma iOS magnifier app poured over to macOS and you're able to take pictures right here. And basically this is used with continuity camera and you're able to just do a lot of stuff with it. So far it's just been pretty buggy here as you can see like that. And it's just beach balling. But yeah, this is the magnifier app inside of macOS. Pretty cool that we have that. And we also have a brand new games app inside of macOS. It just shows you all the games that you've been playing. You're able to add people right here to your games. And it's basically just a second app store, but for games. In fact, it has a more modern design compared to the app store, I think. While the app store just only looks updated for macOS Tahoe, it doesn't look... It looks exactly the same as the macOS Sequoia one. You're able to see screenshots and everything like that. And you're able to see the top free games and top paid games inside of the games app. Now the next thing is inside a spotlight, it has to do with quick keys. So not only does it have a new design that's also more rounded, if you were to press the button WW, you'll see right here that it just searches up Willy widgets right here. Pretty nice that it does that. And then if you were to do WS, for example, it will show up Willy study. So these are the keys that you get to press and it will just show you everything just like that. And also you got a clipboard history. So you gotta enable the clipboard history by default, but now you're able to just look at your clipboard history. Let's just do hi, and then just copy that, and just say bye, and then you're just able to see your clipboard history just like that. And if I were to do that, there's hi, there's bye, you just click on copy again, and it just copies it straight to your clipboard once again. And something else is that widgets are more rounded, so they have more of a rounded appearance to them. And for some people, I think that'll be nice. Other people, they may not like that. But I think it looks a lot more modern with the widgets rounded like that. Anyways, that's everything new here inside of macOS Tahoe. Let me know what you think, and thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, share with me to your friends. Down my apps, Willy Widgets, Willy Steady, and Willy Dreams down in the description down below. And I'll be posting beta 2 as soon as that comes out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!